So I'd like to welcome uh, Tina Schlenter and uh, Marcus Vissing. Um, Tina's from uh, Swiss Re and Marcus is from Pantera, which is going to continue the, the theme of um, innovation. And this time in, in insurance, uh, we've talked a lot about insurance and you saw some of the examples with, with drones. And who would have thought that actually would put an insurance application on ArcGIS Marketplace? So these guys did last Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, one of the days, Thursdays, it was launched. Um, they're going to show you a, an example of that, talk about the philosophy behind that. And I would encourage every one of you to go check this out if you're in real estate with properties and everything else. Start to look at this application. Truly, it's game changing the way we think about risk. So, Tina, thanks. Thank you. So, when you planned your trip to San Diego this year, what did you do? I'm sure you made your travel arrangements, you booked a flight, you looked for a hotel, maybe you already checked the agenda of the activities, maybe you also planned some additional activities in San Diego and the surroundings, just like I did. But I did something in addition. I checked the natural hazard exposure of this area. I work in reinsurance and risk is my business. I'm Tina Schlenter and I'm heading the Swiss Re CatNet office. CatNet is our online hazard atlas. And this is what I saw. So this map shows you just the San Diego area around the convention center. And in the red colors you can see, for example, the coastal flooding risk here. If you now look at the bar chart below the map, you can see that the natural hazard exposure for coastal flooding, for seismic hazard, and for wildfire is rather high. So this makes San Diego a very interesting place to be for someone like me who likes natural hazards. <laughs> so, how would you judge this information? You might think, well, it's an overhead. Is she crazy? Is she checking natural hazards for wherever she's going? I partly agree. It might be an overhead, but as I said, I like the natural hazard information. And I partly agree it might be an overhead for checking this for a conference. But think of it. If you wouldn't go here just for a conference, but if you would, for example, move here, buy a house or found a business, wouldn't it be good to check this kind of information beforehand? I think it is. For a place like San Diego, it's relatively easy to get map information. For other regions in the world, not so much. What we are doing is we are looking really at the data on a global scale. We offer our clients access to the natural hazard information that we de develop via CatNet. It's a standalone web application, and they can analyze their complete portfolios against the natural hazard exposure. Besides that, we also offer CatNet Web Map Services, or WMS, that allows our clients to directly integrate our natural hazard information into their own in-house systems and as such working much more efficiently than they could before with the standalone application. With this sharing of knowledge and data, we are thinking we are really supporting our clients because developing and hosting high resolution data is not very efficient. And with sharing the knowledge that we have, we are supporting Swiss Re's guideline of being smarter together. The two services that I mentioned cover the most important geological, meteorological and hydrological perils in unmatched high resolution and on a global scale. But what about the rest? Assuming that not only Swiss Re clients are interested in the data, how would others learn about it? We are observing that the industry is becoming more and more aware of the value 
of geo-intelligence and location information. However, this requires quite often a very substantial investment into building up this information. Just look, for example, at the insurance industry. There are so many insurance companies and also many reinsurance companies. And they need to geo-encode all their portfolios, all the locations, all the risks they have in their books. And that is quite an investment. But I think it's very similar for other industries as well. Imagine you're working in the automotive sector, for example, and you're looking for a new supplier. Wouldn't it be good to know where he's located and what the natural hazard exposure at that location is, just to be sure to avoid potential losses from business interruption as far as possible? Or look at the real estate business. Maybe you are planning to, buy, to build a new shopping center somewhere. Shouldn't you check beforehand if, for example, there's a risk of flooding in that area? I think so, yes. I could continue with this list. However, you will hear during the next few days many and many examples where you can use geographical data. And at Swissery, we are really convinced that geospatial information is adding value to your data, even though it requires an investment. To support the industry, we developed the new Geo Risk Analyzer. This is available on ESRI's marketplace. It was a cooperation with Conterra. Conterra did the development of the app because they are very experienced in that field. And we added our natural hazard information. So, to show you what the Geo Risk Analyzer is all about, I invite Marcus to show you some slides about that. Thanks a lot, Tina. So, the Geo Risk Analyzer has condensed all the things we saw before to one single question. And the question is Are there any natural hazards or political risks nearby my worldwide locations that I should be aware of? So, we saw this is a question valid for different lines of business. And I wanted to show you in the demo how we could deal with this question. For simplicity, I make an easy demo just on slides, but you will get the clue at the end of it. So first of all, to answer the question, how is the risk? First, I have to know where are my locations. So normally, colleagues will give me a list of addresses like here, just an easy and simple input CSV file I opened here. So there are 12 addresses in there. And now the challenge is for me, make a risk assessment with it. So we can grab this file and start the demo. So then we'll find the GeoRisk analyzer on the marketplace just a few days ago. So we are still very excited. So and, and we hope you will have a look on it. So and we'll try now the workflow who's in there. So, as you would expect, you would log in with your normal Arcus online account, and then the application starts, and the first thing we do is upload the ZSV file. You could drag and drop it on the dialog or use the choice button. Then, next step, it's uploaded, and all 12 addresses already detected in there in the ZSV file, and then we would do the automatic geocoding. We use the ArcGIS online geocoder in there. And then after a few seconds, all is processed. And as the results, we have a summary. And you already can here see the quality of the geocoding. So 12, 10 on, of our 12 addresses are found in a good level. So they are on a point level geocoded with a good quality. One of them is in average quality. So it means it's more or less fine on a street level and one has a below quality. So I have a good impact already. What's the quality of the data? And now can go to the map. There are my 12 addresses now. And as we already think about it, I have to check now what's going on with these two addresses. So I have to check my quality. So we have a workflow in there. You have two abilities. You could edit one address by editing the address attributes, for example, uh, change the house number and do uh, 
relocation again, or you can just move on the map the, until you are satisfied with the final location. So let's do it. Uh, improve the quality by correcting ad an address. So here the address has got a wrong house number. The house number was 999, seems a bit suspective. Um, so we found out the right house number is house number one. Press the lower left button relocate and now we have a, a better geocoding. So we can improve our quality by just checking simply the addresses. The other way that would be just move uh, the location on the map so you can grab the button with the flag and then drag and drop the addresses until you are satisfied with the quality. So at the end of this step, uh, we checked all our addresses, all turned to green, so we can da now do the analysis step. In here, in the analysis, uh, we have got our simple license modeling. It's just easy credit-based, and the dialog shows you how many credits you have and how many credits you will assume through this analysis. So you can start the analysis, it just gives you feedback that it's running, and after 10 seconds, normally, you have enriched now every of these 12 locations with the eight different hazard attributes. They're added at the end of the table and also the political risk. So now we want to do more a deep dive and an analysis. So we pushed in the lower left on the map content button. And then we have here a content slider and now switch off the different risk layers we have seen before. So here's the river flood layer. You see the worldwide data. We can zoom in uh, nearly the same as we have seen by Tina. So that's the value of the app, that there's worldwide, seamless, uh, with the same, same data quality layer of it all. Then we can zoom in, for example, click on the location, and we see now all of our location are enriched with the risk layers. So here, this one, it has a very high coastal flood risk, eight points out of 10, and even a high river flood risk, seven out of 10, and quite a bit windy, it's, it's also there. But the rest is okay for me. And on the left-hand side, you can see the river flood, the high detailed and high resolution data. So then nine layers are in the GeoRisk analyzer, starting from coastal flood, river flood, tsunami, so the water-based layers, and then wildfire tornadoes, earthquake, wind speed, and hailstorm. These eight layers are from the Swiss Re, and we added also another data provider called Konias. They gave us the political risk layer. Let's have a look of one of these. So for example, the hail layer, you can see here, if you are in the mid of the US, you probably might, might have a problem with hail, also in parts of Europe and even in, in India. Also, there's a wind speed layer in there. You see in the north of the Atlantic, lots of wind, even parts of Europe. And the last layer I wanted to show is the, the risk, political risk layer. What's worth here to notice is that we have a subnational uh, political risk layer. So it's divided in different regions. So for example, in Libya, you can see there are different regions with, with different types of conflicts. So I finished my analysis, and now I want to take away my results. So there are two ways to do it. For the first way is to generate a report out of it. I selected a few locations, press the generate report button, and get here the PDF with a nice overview map, and then a single page for every location with all of the attributes. And the other way is just like we started, export it in a CSV file, and now my addresses are all enriched with the natural hazard risk, the political risk, but also the, the coordinates I added during geocoding and also the quality values of the geocoding. So that's the turnaround in the application. So now all of my data is enriched, and I can hand over to Tina for our conclusion. Thank you very much, Marcus. So you might have got the impression from these few slides that Mark has shown you that this is really a mighty application. And if I should just summarize the four most important points about it, is that you really have this high resolution risk information with a worldwide coverage 
you have a lean and standardized workflow and a ready-to-use app. Maybe you're interested to getting a real-life demo, and for that we would of course invite you to join us at the Conterra booth at the user conference this week. And if you have further questions, do not hesitate to talk to us either here at the Business Summit, at the user conference, or contact us via the provided email addresses. If you're interested in company deta details, there will be two slides in the slide deck that will be published later so that you can find those there, but we didn't want to scrump them into this session as well. And now I hope, of course, that all of you are getting crazy about natural hazards just like me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, um, you know, somebody that uh, checks the nat natural hazards before uh, they go to a conference. I mean, how many of you check the weather? You know, I mean, I, I do. You know, see what I'm going to wear. I think uh, I, I should do this more often and find out how do I, should I really be going to that to that conference. So, one of the things that really interested me about this this was Greg talked about the right data, not just any data. And um, you, sh you show this application in many ways, it's, you can't do anything until you get your data right. Was that a deliberate design issue? Yeah, it's hard to get the data, and we, we thought this application would deal with it. So bring the data to the customer in, in different lines of business, and then they have, can do the final conclusion on their own because Sometimes they have to think, is hail for me more important or is river flood more important for me? But we deliver this um, information with an easy to use workflow to them. So that's the intent of it. Yeah. And, and Tina, you know, that workflow where it's red because it's not very good. I mean, most people just like the idea in ArcGIS Online, you drag and drop and everybody goes, wow, you know, like Gary wanted earlier. Um, but you're making people go through, validate it, get all the green lights before you can start. Um, what's the idea behind that? Well, as we learned it the hard way, um, working without a good database is, is difficult, and working without knowing what you do is also difficult. So we thought it's really important that on the one hand side we get the data right, and for that, we have a team of around 40 NATCAD experts around the globe who is developing and constantly updating these data sets. And on the other hand side, if you have then a sound database, you of course need to know what to do with the data because you can look at it and say, yeah, well, it looks nice, but that's all I'm interested in. But that doesn't help you. So you really should get at least initially a guideline how to use the information, how to interpret the results, and get real value out of it for your business. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the, the really important thing for me is that it's just not about those pictures. It's here's the value, this is what they mean. The fact that you're guiding through people through the results, you're allowing them to interpret it. I mean, this is an incredible thing. So thank you both. Thanks. Okay. <laughs>